This is Harley Hartwell, and you're listening to the Case Closed Podcast. Hey guys, Z-Wall here, and this is a very special edition of the Case Closed Podcast. We have a lot to talk about today, first of which I would like to say thank you for all the support on the Silver Bullet Files on the latest episode. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's on Kiss Anime. It is also on our YouTube and Facebook pages. The link for the YouTube channel and for the Kiss Anime is down in the description below this video. But I also encourage you guys to please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Save Case Closed, and also to subscribe to the Silver Bullet Files YouTube channel. It's up to 41 subscribers. It has doubled in the last week and a half or so. We really could use all the support possible on that channel. We want to make that channel grow more and more by the day. So only you guys can help us out with that. The more we have viewerships, the more likes we get, the more people will see how amazing this fan dub really is and how much hard work everyone has put in to make this fan dub what it is. So please go over and subscribe whenever you have the time. Please like us on the Facebook page if you haven't already. Follow us on Twitter at Save Case Closed. And also, please check out the forums. Um, post in the forums. There's a great community here where you can chat and talk about Detective Conan and Case Closed, whether you like the subbed or the dubbed version. All of us are here for the same reason, and that is because we love the show. So please, the link for the forums is also down below. We want to really get that going again. We want to really get that moving and with you guys' support and you guys' help, you guys have done tremendously on everything that we have done here. You've given us support on everything that we put out, whether it be the fan dub, whether it be podcast episodes, whether it be live streams. You guys have been absolutely incredible on the support for everything that we've done here. And I can't thank you guys enough. On behalf of Professor C and myself, I want to thank you guys personally for everything that you've done and for all the support you've given for every single thing that we've done. I really, really appreciate it. Now today, we start a three-part series, a three-part interview with Kevin M. Connolly, the voice of Harley Hartwell. Now, the last time we had a three-part interview with Kevin, um, audio issues came in the way, and we weren't able to completely post all three parts. But now, we will be posting all three parts the first part will be going up now as you're listening to this. The second part will be coming up in the next few days. And then the third part soon after that. So get ready, guys. It's going to be a very interesting interview. We talked to Kevin about a whole lot of different things. And he also talked to us about a lot of things. And he also shared his experiences with voice acting as he did in the last interview. And a lot of other things that are really interesting to talk about. So let me, again, let me... Just spare all the nitty gritty details and let's get right into it. Here is part one of our interview with Kevin M. Connolly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 35th episode of the Case Closed podcast. This is D Wall here, and what an exciting show we have for you tonight, today, guys. First of all, I want to introduce my guests. First of all, um, I want to introduce Professor C. Hello, how's everyone doing? Good to be back. And I know it's been a while since we've heard from him. Um, he's been busy with a lot of outside projects, but um, he's here today for this special podcast. And it is very special for a good reason, because today, once again, we are joined by Mr. Kevin M. Connolly. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Hello, interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the last time... Kevin was here. We did a very um, in-depth interview, um, but the third part of the interview was um, unfortunately not be able to be uh, uploaded to YouTube because of a lot of audio issues. But this time we have taken extra precautions to make sure that that does not happen. So, um, my bad. We will, be, we will be making sure of that this time. So. Um, I know that there was a lot of questions that weren't be were a answered last time, 
uh, we had the interview. So we are going to, I, what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little bit different than last time. Um, we're going to jump right into the questions that we weren't able to get to last um, interview. And then we're going to ask um, probably some other things and maybe it'll transition over and, um, you know, in a loop around back to that. But we're going to start with those. And um, I'm pretty sure Professor C has those questions ready to go. So. I'll let him. Uh, I'll let him start it off. Uh, yeah, um, a couple of the. Uh, well, the first question I had was actually from somebody I used to work with, um, who was okay. a, a a big sort of online fan, and uh, <laughs> was, was really, you know, uh, really loved uh, your role as uh, Heathcliff. Um, cool, thank you. He uh, wondered if you had a favorite line as Heathcliff uh, from the show that you could. Uh, remember or call back on uh, that you enjoyed recording or, or anything of that? Oh, boy, that was two years ago. I don't remember a darn thing I said. <laughs> 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 this is this is, this is is why I get scared. If I ever get invited to a convention again, I'm going to have to print out lines of dialogues just for this type of question because I honestly cannot remember a darn thing I said. <laughs> Maybe I did a, I, you know, I could, I could throw up a grunt where I lifted the sword. I could do that, but oh boy, I, yeah, I have to go back and... Uh, I have to research some. My memory is terrible. Once I'm done with a show, I mean, this is theater. This is anything. I usually forget it. So, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll be okay. Um, I'll find and, something, and I'll record it, and I'll send it to you guys later to forward to him. Okay. Yeah. No, definitely. I, I, I think he would appreciate <laughs> it. He's a huge anime fan, and I know he's a huge Sword Art Online guy. So Awesome. Um, awesome. 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 Absolutely loved, uh, loved that role. And um, I, another question. I cannot remember who asked it. Um, okay. Do you remember what your favorite uh, your favorite episodes to record of Harley were overall? Oh my gosh, um, all of them. <laughs> 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 no, I you know, and, and I say that because you know, obviously, you know, as, as before the show, we were you know counted up, and I was in eight 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 uh, you know individual titles with him. You know, he was the first major for me, major character that I was ever cast in. And, and, you know, not only was it a time where I was learning how to do the whole ADR process, you know, and, and I think I've said before, and I'm always, always very thankful for the patience that I got from Mike McFarlane and Chris Kazin and directing me on those and, you know, guiding me, and not, you know, firing me immediately. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, he was such a fun little guy to do. And it was something so different than what I had done, you know, because, you know, when you're in, when you're in, theater school and and you know and all that fun stuff you know you're uh you know you're working with classic you know theater works and that kind of thing and i had never done something like this before and so to get to play a teenage detective who knows this other teenage detective who's shrunk into the body of a kid i mean you know that's not your everyday it's a little departure from shakespeare and um so those were just really a, a great introduction to that kind of storytelling you know and, and i had said before i think in the last podcast that um you know, I I didn't know I was watching anime when I was younger and watching, you know, uh, you know Saturday morning shows um, like Battle of the Planets and, and all that stuff. And so, so um, that was kind of a great, I would say, reintroduction, but it really was for me an introduction. And so so doing Harley and uh, though there was one I, and I can't remember this is I think it was in the movie. There is uh, I was being directed by Caitlin Glass. And there was one paragraph. Now, usually when you get a long paragraph, you know, studios are, are different. Some studios break them up into just a couple sentences and then slice them together. Uh, this particular case at, at Funny, um, we were trying to get the whole paragraph in, in one take. And because we tried, we tried punching in at certain levels and there was, just, there was just the way it was written. There was just a flow with it that you, you just could not break it up and I had to call on my breath control and taking in a nice deep breath and say this whole paragraph and not run out of air by the end of it and uh, Caitlin and I had a lot of fun with that trying to get that done it was nerve wracking and uh, but it was a lot of fun to do but, yeah. uh, but overall overall I, I, I love Harley in general he's he's uh, he, he really is up there at the top of the list of my favorites and uh, it would be a lot of fun to play him again I think yeah if the well, opportunity Opportunity arose, you know. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, and and you know, you never know with uh, the way things go in in the business um, if that would happen. Um, exactly. I, I guess uh, one thing I, I 
was curious about is is when you when you do speak, Harley sounds like a very natural character for you to play. Um, was it mostly trying to find the voice or find the attitude for the character that was most challenging for you? Um, uh, well, we remember the story of the voice from last time. <laughs> and the yeah, issue yeah, no, definitely. I thought I would never work again. No, uh, you know, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, especially starting off with Chris. Uh, I mean, Mike, Mike gave me some great direction in that first audition, you know. Uh, I mean, starting with the voice, you know, we played with that a little bit but then you know just giving hints of the character and and the type of persona he was or is i should say and uh finding that kind of cocky attitude uh you know that well, I, no, I shouldn't say cocky because he's confident he's confident in his skills he knows how good he is um and you know w- you know where where that might come off as arrogant and cocky to the outside characters to him it's just being who he is doing his job been doing it well, you know. So yeah. you know, putting those ideas, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I do practice in, in finding the voice, but you know, like I think I mentioned last time, you know, what I really learned, especially doing audiobooks and how to find, you know, where to find, the, the, I mean, the, the the cliche phrase of where do I find the character, and it, it's fine for me. It's finding it in the in their persona and attitude of what the, of how they approach life, of how they're approaching a situation, um, and then and then sprinkling in some voice changes just to to add to that lovely character soup as Johnny Depp calls it I think (laughs) yeah no and uh, and I was I was looking up while we were talking a little bit before the show about uh, how many cases Harley solved and I hopefully I don't forget the number and and misquote but uh, I read it was 55 cases in total out of of course you know that in that Harley is actually solved in the series yeah um, out of the whole series, which I was, I was quite, I was, I think it was 55 or 50. Um, nice. and, that's, and that's, that's quite a bit, um, for the, for a character. Uh, and then of course they, they said on Wikipedia, it was, uh, and this is on detective Conan world. So that's, that's a, a little bit better than Wikipedia. Sure. <laughs> uh, you know, cause they actually go through and do the research, but the, then they said it was a thousand cases because of the amount of, uh, uh, like lost cats and stuff that Harley's found overall. And with his, oh, okay. So something like that, but uh, which I don't remember. I'll have to go back and figure out where that came from. But uh, I thought you'd want to know that as a side note, a little fact of, of how Harley does. Uh, so he's been busy. Yeah. Oh, he's been busy. And we also, I think me and d had touched on this um, uh, some time ago because a fan had brought it up to us and it's like, uh, and, and you, you might not know this, but Harley has almost died so many times really? in the series, trying to, uh, you know, trying to solve cases. He usually is the one that gets, uh, I found in a few episodes, even in particular, and, and I hadn't thought about this since a fan had brought it up, obviously. Uh, right. he, gets, he gets thrown into these cases where it's just so dangerous, and he puts himself in so much harm's way. And literally, I think through the whole series, he's almost died at least – Three or four times. There was one time I actually thought he died uh, in the series because he was. Um, there was a case where he was kidnapped and and oh him and his gosh. girlfriend were held hostage. And in the episode, you're led to believe that he, you know, actually died. And then, of course, the episodes you recorded uh, for License to Die, he almost, uh, you know, died in that case too. Actually. Oh, that's right. So uh, I mean, he's a guy that. Uh, for me, I, I find just is always in harm's way, but he somehow comes through, and that's that's what I've always enjoyed about his character. It leaves so much suspense. Because um, that's how he likes to roll. Man, he's dangerous. <laughs> he is a dangerous guy. That that's Osaka, his, that's that his Osaka. name. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's Harley Danger Hartwell. Yeah. Harley Danger yeah. Hartwell. <laughs> yeah, the third. Oh, I don't gosh. Know. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't know, man. It's something with that Osaka or... <laughs> or right, whatever. exactly. <laughs> Osaka or whatever they call it. <laughs> um, but uh, another, I, I've dug up a couple of more questions. Um, sure. It's, uh, this is from uh, Vanessa uh, Montalongo, and she asks, was there ever a point in any of the seasons do you, did you expect the show to end? Um, did I expect it to end? No. I mean, I have, uh, uh, you know, I had no idea. I, I mean, I was aware of how long the show had been running in comparison to other projects that Funimation works on that are finite series, you know? Um, and, but for me, you know, 
you know, half the time it's just waiting for the phone call that says, come in tomorrow, we need you for something. Yeah. And so just getting, you know, lost, not lost, but, you know, shuffled in with so many other projects. Um, uh, and again, you know, I, we actors are peons almost, you know, we have no say in, in what's licensed or not and, and ratings and that kind of thing. So, I mean, I just had no idea, uh, you know, uh, it, and then I never, I mean, it sounds horrible to say I'm, I'm thinking now as I say it, that I never thought about it. Um, but beginning again, that was also a very much of a learning time for me. And I didn't know how things work with the series and licensing and all that stuff. And, and so it was just kind of, a. I remember, I think at one point, you know, a couple of years had gone by and I hadn't heard anything about the show. And I was like, Oh, is, is that still going? Cause I, I remember seeing, I remember seeing the, you know, when we fill out the timesheet, it usually has a list of, uh, uh, of the, the shows that are in production at that point. And then they just check off which show it is and then put in the number of hours and that kind of thing. And I remember seeing case close on there. Uh, so I just assumed it was still going, but, um, uh, after a while, you know, you see the name drop off and then, you know, Oh, well, they're not working on that one right now. So, um, more of a sad realization, I think that, uh, Oh, I'm not going to be doing him anymore for a while. Oh, well, you know, and then worrying yeah. about the next audition. <laughs> yeah. You know. But, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I think all of us as fans kind of feel that. And, uh, you know, we all miss the show in, in, an incredible amount. Um, I think the last time we interviewed, uh, the loop on the third versus detective Conan crossovers were just getting ready to come out. I think a week after that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 And uh, what are your thoughts on companies that uh, are, are trying to break into the U.S. market by releasing sub-anime companies like Crunchyroll, who actually uh, actually simulcast Case Closed? And by the way, Kevin, I, another side note, I don't know if you know this, but not only does Crunchyroll simulcast Case Closed, uh, it's after, three, after the air date in Japan, three days later, the episode is subbed now on Crunchyroll. They actually moved it up. Wow. Um, That's amazing. So people are working their butts off to get this done. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on companies like that? Well, I mean, uh, again, not being involved so much in the business side. I mean, I, I, my, my understanding, and this is just, you know, in light conversation, I am not a business person. I am not an import person. Um, uh, I'm not a production person, but you know, I think a big thing of it is to obviously try and I think a big factor I should say is to try and fight piracy. Um, and I think it's, uh, I think it's testing the waters to see how well it works. Um, and I think, you know, companies have to, you know, the, you know, the, the only reason companies stay in business is if people buy product, you know, and, and with, and with the internet and, and torrents and, and, you know, and, and stuff like that, it's making it more and more challenging, you know, to keep, to keep these companies alive, you know? Um, so I think, uh, I think companies, you know, they're, they're having to do what they can to, to keep product interesting and to make sure that they can still, make it financially viable for us to continue because, you know, if, if it just continues to where it's, it's being pirated and nobody pays for it, well, you know, then I'm, that means I don't get a paycheck and, you know, I can't work for free. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's, I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I, I it's, it's, it's going to be really, uh, uh, you know, just to see how it works out and, and if it really does curb, you know, any kind of those illegal issues and, and to try and keep these companies going. You know, because I like to work. <laughs> yeah, no, and, you know? and uh, yeah, and I mean, with companies like Disco Tech who put out obviously the crossover specials, and they do a whole bunch of work with Loop on the Third, and then Crunchyroll. You know, they have their own subscription base where you go in and you pay mm. six. It's actually seven dollars, and you get an access to a a whole library of stuff that they do, and um, they've really been big on bringing you know. Uh, shows that haven't really made it over here or shows that are brand new in Japan and bringing them over. Do yeah. you think that a company like that could spark interest for an English dub? I'm absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, that it's, it's always going to be, uh, you know, when it comes down to money first, you have to look at a, uh, a title or a project and what is the fan reaction to, to it in America? You know, I mean, obviously not every series is going to connect with, anime fans, you know, and, you know, the bigger response to something's like, oh, well, this might warrant an English dub because people, you know, are really gravitating to this. It speaks to them. It, it, it's a, a, it's great storytelling. Um, I mean, I remember having a conversation, uh, with Mike McFarland or it just happened to mention, uh, it was during, I think it was during a case closed recording session. 
And he had just happened to mention that he was very excited because they were really close to getting a great series called Full Metal Alchemist. And he, he, he I just, he was so excited. Uh, what I remember is that he said, I'm very excited. It's a, it's a great show and a great title and we really want to work on it. And so, you know, if you get that, that excited from the director, you know, that's, that's obviously a good sign. Uh, and, and uh, I, it's, it's a matter of seeing, you know, it, I think it's just a matter of seeing what, what American anime fans react to. And, and then of course, you know, how much is it, how much is it to license it as well? You know, there's again, a bunch of business side aspects. I have no clue how they work, but, uh, uh, you know, with, with, with having, you know, easier access to see material, you know, as quick as we do now because of the internet, um, hopefully there are companies researching that and saying, okay, what are people watching now? And do they want to hear their favorite actors? English actors be in it. So I'm sure a lot of research goes into a lot of it. So, yeah. And, uh, and that's very true. And I think we've even talked about the business aspect before of how complex it is. And we don't even, you know, oh. I mean, even as much research as I've done, I, I can't even tell you, you know, the cost on an average anime today. I could tell you what it oh, was sure. 10 years ago on some of them, but I can't tell yeah. you what it is today. And, that all has to do with music and, and all yeah, because I, I, I think last time we talked about, I cannot remember who I talked to about this. They were much more well informed in this arena, but I remember it was we were talking about a specific series. I can't remember the title, but they were talking how it was so difficult to get because you had the animation from the animation company, but then the sound effects were the, those rights were owned by a different company, and then the music was owned by a different company. So you're having to negotiate licenses with three different companies just to get one title which i would never even have imagined of would be a problem but you know that's that it was a factor in this case um so yeah there's so many moving parts that uh i mean i had a conversation uh with rachel and and you know the 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 idea of uh you know what it takes to to start your own company to do to start doing anime dubs and and uh uh, just so many things I would have no idea to even consider. So yeah, there's, there's a ton, ton of cogs in that machine. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, hopefully case closed doesn't have that issue going, you know, with licenses. I, right. know, I think it's one of the series, honestly, that doesn't have that issue. Cause I think it does come more, I guess you could say in a word, word quote unquote bundled. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but I, yeah, there've been some major horror stories of, uh, of that happening with shows. Um, this, this next question comes from someone named Sarah Sunshine. Um, it says, are you dubbing any other characters in anime recently or soon? Um, I did, I did some, some tiny little characters in a show that I cannot remember the title of. It's on Netflix. Chris Kazin directed me over at Bang Zoom with it. And I did a couple of, they priest slash night. I think I'm so bad. I mean, they, you know, they, they just said, do you want to come in and work on a show? I, of course I do. I'm an actor. I want a paycheck. No, um, uh, I'll have to look that up. I, ha I haven't done a lot recently. I've, I've only done a couple things with uh, Bang Zoom this year. Um, and uh, but uh, uh, I am uh, researching new avenues to in introduce myself to some other companies and uh, and just to say hello. And uh, I'd love to get back to it a lot more. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I stepped away from it as a conscious choice uh, for many years ago and i'm making a conscious choice to hopefully step back into it <laughs> so yeah so hopefully soon i mean um you know keep an eye on the uh, uh on the on the new twitter maybe i'll plug that later um to uh i'm really trying to be more conscious of 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 uh making sure i get info out about, about what i'm doing and, and so hopefully old and, and new friends and fans can can keep up as best as i can yeah, and uh, just to also on a note, Kevin, we will add your Twitter into the uh, in the description, and and anything you do, we will definitely uh, patronize it on our page. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Can. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, a side note for also later, um, I guess when we're off the air, you, you can ask me this, sure. or I can I I can ask you this uh, rather. Um, mm -hmm. I had gotten because uh, of your first appearance back in October. I wanted to get a little something to, uh, uh, you know, for you being on the show. So I had a yeah. little, little something that I wanted to send to you. Um, so okay. if you get some contact info to me later to do that. That'd be great. Oh sure. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Yeah, I think you'll really like it. 
Okay, um, cool. Yeah, so it's uh, it's it's something from the show that's uh, that I think you'll really appreciate. So um, awesome. So yeah, just uh, we'll we'll hook up and talk about that later. And uh, but yeah, I just oh. want to leave that there for you. Um, thank you so much. And and we'll definitely get the Twitter thing plugged for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Um, I've I've learned the power of Twitter finally. Uh, yeah. Uh, and the hash and the hashtag, as as you saw earlier, I've already put a little picture up. I saw you liked it already, and and trying to all the little hashtags I, I had to add in there. <laughs> yeah, did you like the Harley? Uh, some of the Harley pictures we threw up over the. Oh yeah, they're awesome, awesome. Yeah, some of the. Uh, I think the, uh, the. There's one with him and Jimmy. Uh, not the not the recent one, but it's. I think it's one I did a week ago that got you know like two thousand views and like thirty or forty likes. What? <laughs> oh my god! I have to about. look. I have to look that one up yeah yeah and I'll, I'll send you a picture somebody sent me a postcard from japan uh, of a picture of them together i'll i'll, I'll take a picture and, and tweet it later no way that's um, awesome yeah, yeah. You, that that is awesome oh, yeah my. no I, I love i love artwork i i'm 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 uh uh attempting to finally sit down and i, I you know and draw this year but i'm I, I think one of the most special gifts that i can have ever received is um is getting fan artwork i mean i think I think that's such a, a such a personal and special gift, and so I, I love seeing all the artwork of characters. And uh, uh, actually, I found a bunch, mostly from Full Metal, obviously, right now. But um, uh, I mean, I'll post those later. But I think, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, and the uh, the picture, and it's like I said, it was posted a week ago. It's actually from, uh, I believe, Movie Seven, where uh, Funimation didn't obviously get to dub, but um, it's right after where they stop dubbing at movie six, but movie seven where Harley makes an appearance uh, and it's in the movie throughout the whole, uh, throughout the whole thing. So, Oh, nice. Um, I actually haven't even seen movie seven myself cause I, I continue to hold out hope that one day, you know, Oh, <laughs> it's dubbed and I can watch it in English and I don't have to worry about all that. It, it uh, might be time to, to throw in the hat and, and watch. It might, it might. <laughs> you know, one of these days, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hang on to a little bit of hope for a while. There you go. There you but go. just just in case you were wondering, I, I believe that's where it actually comes from. It's a movie cool. Seven. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. And uh, I know D Wall. I think you had some questions you wanted to throw in here as well. Um, not too many. I think the only one that I really wanted to ask was, and I know we didn't ask this last time. I, okay. I think because we could we couldn't ask. I don't believe. Um, oh. But the you, you Kevin, I'm pretty sure. If you've seen the Facebook page, you know we have a fan dub going. Right yes, right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you seen any of it? Um, and if you have seen any of it, what are your thoughts on it? I from, haven't from a you know from a personal from a fan dub. Pers- I mean a uh, voice actor perspective. I I have to be. I have not watched it yet. I have it bookmarked. Um, I because I've been kind of watching, just seeing the post of you. You know talking about the production of it and I'm very excited to watch. I do want to do check it out. But that in turns make want inspires a question for me. Um how have you guys felt about putting it together? I mean, have you have you guys worked on fan dubs before? No. Of, of, no. Oh, so this is, this is your fir- <laughs> first time doing this. So what wow. has that experience been like? I'm intrigued. Oh, wow. Um well, uh, now I'll speak for myself, I guess on uh, Real quick at first, I guess um, it was a vision I kind of had two and a half years ago, just as a way um, because obviously when we launched, you know, five years, I guess. Oh wow, it has been five years. Oh my gosh! Holy cow, since we started this, um, <clears throat> you know, we to this day it's it's our number one priority to push DVD sales and all that, not just for Funimation's benefit, but just for a show's bottom line benefit. I call it. Um, so that if another company ends up picking it up someday or, or if Funimation continues um, at some point in the future, you never know how things go, obviously. But uh, right. but that the show has shown that it's made this much money and off of this many sales. And, right, um, right. you know, a, a, really it was started because um, the, it was a vision I had. I thought, well, what if we what if there was some sort of season six English dub out there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's not, but if there was, would it get people talking about case closed again as something that would be brought back officially? Right. Um, and if it's out there, that starts the conversation of, you know, this may not be an official dub, but what if there was an official dub, you know? And so yeah. 
um, a couple of years ago, it was just really a, a vision to we would still be able to promote the podcast and still be able to promote the show the way we have as far as, you know, hey, buy the show because right. that's what kept it from coming, you know, uh, future seasons coming. Um, and that's really where the idea came from there. I Honestly, okay. for me, I did not envision it going as far as it has. I thought maybe we'd do one episode or two episodes yeah. at most with the cast we had back then. But it's for me, I'd say it's blown up quite a bit. I know D-Wall has a lot of comments about it as well, though. Yeah, I mean, it's it's gotten a lot bigger than, you know, I'm pretty sure you thought it would be because, <laughs> like, I, I, I too thought that since it was such a big project, since it was so many episodes, I figure we'd only get to, like, one episode or maybe two. Yeah. But the fact that we got into three, not just three, but the amount of support that it's gotten – um, the amount of people that want to join in, mm -hmm. things like that. It, it's it's kind of, it's a, an amazing feeling. And me personally, like writing the scripts for the episode, yeah, and having people tell me how much they like the scripts and how I write them, yeah, is something that you know, as a writer myself, I take that very personally. In oh, a sure. Good way, yeah, because it's like I didn't, I. Really, I I kind of I'm the harshest critic on myself. Because, oh, we all are. Yeah, I, every I artist like, is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like my scripts weren't any weren't that good to sure be, to, for somebody to say, hey, you know, your scripts I can understand them clearly. I I really can. Um, this is a lot easier for me because of it and stuff like that. Like I didn't think it would be that way. Sure, personally, but. Yeah, you know, just to hear that makes me feel better. Makes me feel happy about how I write my scripts, and going forward, I'm going to try and write them the way that they are because mm -hmm. it's a lot easier for people to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I'll say, and I, you know, I, one criticism I did get quite, you know, a, a little at the beginning, not a whole lot, but a little bit was that I was walking over the line a little bit as far as, as using it um, as actually doing the fan dub. Um, but the thing for me was, was I could still promote people to buy the season sets. I mean, I, and people know that's the most important to me. We, uh, when the Lupin versus Conan special came out, you know, it was mm -hmm. doing so well on Amazon and, uh, and we were posted, I think I was posting like every other hour, like, Hey, it's sitting at number 68 on the anime chart. Let's get it all the way up, <laughs> you know? Wow. And uh, I mean, that's the kind of stuff like that's important to me. Um, and you know, for me, it's, it is walking kind of a fine line. Um, but I do feel like it to this day can still be used for, if not anything else to start a conversation of, sure, sure. of you know, maybe this show could come back, you know, with, with all the things that Crunchyroll's done, the fact that we have a fan base, um, yeah. that follows us, um, that's really all it's 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 for to me. I, I love doing it, and it's a fun project. But at the end of the day, we want to promote um, everything with the series and gotcha, and yeah. uh, you know try to get it out there um, to as many people that don't even know about Case Closed at all. And uh, yeah, definitely. I, I've read I read an email uh, yesterday, and it was it was from a um, somebody who I think is actually in the military, and I, I won't give his name out um, because I haven't asked obviously for his permission, sure. but uh, yeah. But he says that he watches, you know, watches this and it, that it, you know, keeps him going and, you know, that it, that he really enjoys it. So um, stuff like that obviously hits you and, and makes you. Oh, think sure. About, you know, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, that that's what I think is the best part of this is that, you know, it's, it's well, just like any I think any type of art um, form is that, you know, is is connecting with someone is is inspiring someone is. You know, I mean, like I, I, I got a couple of fan emails last year that, you know, saying I, we love, we love this show that you, you did and your character is awesome. And, and it's, you know, or the whole cast is great, you know, and, and I think that's, that's the best compliment you can get. Like, you know, D wall, like you said, you know, we, we all think our, our, we always, at least me, I should say, I mean, this is why I hate self-directing because I'll, I'll take 45 minutes to record a commercial. That's a 15 second spot <laughs> because I've just, <laughs> 
hate how every take is, you know. Um, but, you know, to realize that, you know, that you have connected with someone uh, on an artistic level, on an emotional level, on a storytelling level, uh, I think that's the best compliment you can get. And I think that's fantastic that you guys are getting that. And, and I definitely will be watching and, and keeping an eye on what you guys produce in the near future, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and we, we appreciate that. I, I think um, something that would, I think, help, what, what kind of advice would you give to people that, um, maybe not just people that are, are working on just the fandom, but I'm, like voice actors in general as far as how they approach an audition, what, what kind of advice would you give to people? Well, that's that's the that's the twenty five thousand dollar question, or depending if it's a national ad or not. Um, you know, it, it, first of all, it depends on the type of audition. I mean, you know, you, you're going to have a different, a slightly different approach to a commercial audition compared to a audiobook audition, compared to an uh, an animated character audition, compared to a video game audition. Um, for anime specifically, you know, one of the great things I was remembering minded about I was getting coached last night by by Rachel on an audition for a video game is to you know one of the things for me is visually to look at the character you know um, you know our physicality as human beings really defines uh, how we how we're how we're heard what our voice is like so I'm you know I'm six foot tall and I'm pretty husky and I normally have kind of a little deeper voice you know so if I see a character character in a, in a video game picture or an anime, you know, uh, that's a big guy, let's say barrel chested, you know, I'm going to, you know, just finding the voice, you know, you kind of have to, to, to see where, where does this voice come from? You know, so it's a big barrel chested guy. I'm going to kind of speak as if I'm speaking out of my chest, you know, really get in there, you know? Um, and then really taking to heart the descriptions and sometimes the descriptions can be very sparse in what you get in a character. And sometimes they're very detailed. Um, like I did an, I did an audition for a, uh, recently for a friend of mine who is casting a marionette play that will have recorded voiceover for the characters. And there was extremely detailed, uh, descriptions of the character type and even voice samples of who they, who they wanted to have a flavor of. Like there was one character who was, um, uh, the, the YouTube link they sent me was, I think it is Donald Pleasant from the uh, Halloween movies. They wanted someone of his kind of tone and his kind of delivery. I mean, so you can get something that specific or you may get a drawing, a two sentence description of the character and five lines of dialogue. So it's a combination of soaking in what you see visually and where does this, where does the character's voice come from and then using your imagination to uh, really kind of create, uh, again, in a very confined space. I mean, if you get five lines of dialogue and that's it to express a whole character, then you really have to use your imagination. And, and, and one of the things that I wasn't taking advantage of, the, the kind of standard thing on auditions is to do three takes. Or, or, I, or this, uh, this video game I auditioned for last night said no more than five takes. So they're giving you permission to play a little bit, you know. So one of the things that Rachel uh, did for me is I read, I, I read, I read the line a couple ways, and the description was, I think it was, a, it was astounded. Okay, well, how many different ways can I sound astounded? Uh, and so on the third take, we decided, well, let's just change it up. You know, let's just try something completely different. Make it, make it a soft read, but you know, uh, and, and and just play with the words a little bit in the same vein of what they gave you. And, and who knows, it may spark something else. So it's a, it's a lot of imagination, but it's also a lot of research as much as you can. Like I, I read for an, I got invited to read for an anime series uh, earlier this week for Bang Zoom. And the description of the character was, you know, solid. And it just, but it ended with, you know, the characters, you know, we're not sure he's, he's, he's still a mystery, even though he's very nice to the rest of the people around him. So I don't want to give away the show. Um, but then I looked up the series on Wikipedia. I said, well, let me just take a look at this. So it's a short series. It's a dramatic series. And in the end, I'm the villain. Or the character, I haven't been casting the part. The character is the villain. So that changes up a lot of things compared to the little description I've got. Is he's a nice guy to everybody, but he's mysterious. Which is very different than saying, because we find out that you're the guy that does all the bad stuff. 
So taking the time to do that research really added a whole different layer to how I wanted to read the character. Um, so it's, you know, I, I think what happens is, is that a lot of people kind of get stuck saying, well, I can do this great voice and I'm gonna look at the picture and this is my voice. And they don't take into account, you know, you've got, you've got to layer on, on the character. I, I took a great class with Tony Oliver and he talked about at the core is you, but then layer on the elements of the character. And that is not just in the voice, that's in the attitude. What is his or her place in the storyline? Uh, what is the ultimate goal or desire of these characters? Um, and again, for me in this particular audition case, finding out he's not mysterious. He's the villain. He's the one that we're going to hate in the end. And uh, so, you know, taking that information and, and applying it in, uh, I think really will hopefully help me get the part. Yeah, and then it probably surprises them if you already come in with a certain approach to the character, that, you know, because they don't know if you look this stuff up or not, obviously. Oh, exactly. Um, I mean, but I, 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 I trust that, you know, I, I think any good actor or actress worth his or her salt, you know, they, they know you, you, you get as much information as you can. Um, sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's not. You know, I, I, I remember I did work with a guy um, who wasn't quite as um, studious in that on a character that had been that it, that it had appeared in a graphic novel um, who was a angel type character or spiritual type character but he hadn't looked that up and based on the name of the character I don't want to get into many details because I don't know if you'll listen or not he's a very nice guy but just based on the name he decided that the character was Russian and I looked up because I looked at the character because I was auditioning for another character in the same comic book and i'm like well he's not russian you know you have to you have to take the time and and do your research you know and i think i said before you know my my one of my big personal mottos is your competition is always working harder than you are so i take the time to find out what's going on as much as i can yeah and i'm sure if you're and i it may go without saying but i guess i'll ask it anyway um, if you're directing somebody like you for example, if you're directing somebody, um, do you yeah. encourage them to go look up the character and to really learn that character? Uh, no, as, as that, that's a little different. As the job of the director is that I've done the research and I know how I want the character portrayed. I mean, yes, the, if the actor or actress has put that in, but it's my turn. You know, as a director, if I'm working with someone who's cast in a particular character, then it's ultimately going to be my vision. You know, and uh, uh, you know, trusting that if they've if if they've done the research, that we're both in the same vein, we know where we need to go together. You know, it it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be too different. Um, but uh, like like when I and, and in anime sometimes though it may not be as readily available. Um, like when I did Rumbling Hearts, I got the call that I had been given. I got the lead part, but then the, the next day I was in the studio, so I hadn't I didn't have the time. And, but Zach had me watch the first two episodes before we even started recording so that so then I could find out what was going on and then understand where he he wanted me to go with the character and how and how he plays out in, in uh, episode by episode. So as a director, there's a lot more collaborativeness, but it's, it's up to the director to know what he or she wants already. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it, yeah. it makes total sense. Did you actually di ever direct an episode of Rumbling Hearts, or no? Oh, no, 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 no. I just, I was just, I just acted in that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, the only, the, I directed. I, I mean, I, I directed, and I did such a bad job. I think you know, going back to earlier, D Wall, that we just hate what we do. Um, uh, I directed the last ten episodes of a series called Peach Girl, which I, uh, I haven't watched since. <laughs> but. Um, uh, I mean, that was, you know, that's where I really got thrown into the fire and, and had to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 Zach Bolton was my, was the producer on that and great, great guy to work with. And, you know, very, very, you know, stern in some notes, but that's, that's his job, you know, you know, to, to, and, but really helped me, uh, you know, do a better job on that. And, I wouldn't mind directing again. I think I, I, I know now how to do much better research and, and prepare myself and and uh but that was the only and then i directed I, I think i i filled in for a couple of directors after that on some things but um that was my, my only foray in directing anime at the time okay okay and uh you know we talked about it a little bit off off the uh, off the show about you know how you can 
uh, record quite a bit at home. Um, yeah. <clears throat> do you find that to be a, a game changer? And are you finding that you can audition and record parts at home now more easily? Well, anime wise, I don't think, you know, again, I, I have never done that because the added complication is that you're having to record to picture. You know, you're having to match flaps, and I don't personally have that capability right now. But audition-wise and audiobook-wise, oh, yeah, I mean, then it's, it's, it's gorgeous because I don't have to go into a studio. Well, I mean, it's twofold, actually, now that I say that, because when I do stuff at home, I'm not only just the voice actor, but I have to be the engineer and I have to be the cleanup person, you know, whereas if I went to a studio, I can do my lines, make my mistakes, and then leave and get a paycheck <laughs> uh, compared to like I do a lot of work for a children's audiobook company and excuse me, I'm very, um, uh, very hard on myself, my own recordings technically. So I spend a lot of time cleaning up all my little mouth clicks and, um, extra breaths that I don't want in there. Uh, uh, so, well, it, you know, it is nice where I can, I have a lot of control over that. And then I can, uh, you know, if I get an audition, I don't have to, you know, take time and drive to a studio and, and do the audition and then drive back home where here I get an email from my agent saying, here's the script you got till tomorrow morning. And I'm like, okay, I pop in my booth before I eat dinner and I'm done. So, I mean, and that, and it's been that way. I think, um, that's been really kind of building up the last few years. I mean, when I started, uh, in, uh, I, uh, was almost full-time voiceover in 2007 and I was recording in my closet and that was great, you know? Um, and I mean, uh, you know, agencies, uh, talent agencies out here and a lot of casting directors just expect you to have home recording setups, you know, and then even if I get cast in something that I, I record he here, I can be directed over Skype, which is fantastic. So it's, it's not, it's not so much a game changer anymore. It's almost the norm now, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, has any of your work with bang zoom been at home or no, no, I've oh. always gone in for that. That's always, because again, you know, you're having to, to, I don't, I don't physically have the equipment, equipment um for them you would want i mean it, it, and this is just hypothetical i don't know if they work with anybody who does work at home um where you would need what's called an isdn hookup which is a very expensive uh, uh hookup for recording um and then two you know uh i wouldn't be directing myself you know it's just easier because bang zoom is 20 minutes for me so it's just easier to go to them uh and then record the stuff and then come home <laughs> um, so yeah, most most uh, most big big projects like that are still going to be done in studio because too, um, I think I may have mentioned this last time. You know, every booth kind of has its own sound or room noise, and so when you're recording something that has multiple actors and actresses, you want the same sound environment. So we all go go to the same booth to record, uh, so that you know there, there's a consistency in sound quality on that level. Yeah, and uh, you know. I, I do remember uh, you bringing that up because you said each it's got its own unique uh, noise yeah. in it. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I built my sound booth. It's a 4x4, four four, which would sound slightly different if I had built a 4x6, which I kind of wish I did. <laughs> I'm a big guy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about space and acoustics. And then, two, the fact is I record on a $150 microphone where major studios have $2,000 microphones. So, you know, all those technical elements, you really want to have everybody come to the same place, you know. Uh, so that's why that particular genre, you know, uh, anime and video games is, is done still mostly in studio. But all my audiobook stuff, I do at home. Um, all my auditions, I do at home. Um, so that, that, has, that has made life a lot. Well, I, as I said earlier, it's a kind of twofold. I, I am terrible at self-directing, and this is why I now seek out... Uh, I hire coaches to to direct me over Skype because you I, I need that outside ear to say, Kevin, that may have sounded great in your, your head, but it's terrible in real life. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So actually, I I, I I had too much fun last night with my coaching session with Rachel and where, where I um I uh, 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 have created a two minute blooper reel of me just making stupid jokes. Um, <laughs> so uh, if I get cast in this particular game i can't say the title at all because I, I, I read lines from the actual audition i don't want to post that online because of non-disclosure agreements sure. yada 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 but if it gets to that point I, I will i will post that and let you guys know to hear how stupid i really can be um yeah can you say if it's a if it's a pc game or a, or a console game or anything like that 
all, all uh, I, I'm, I'm going to assume console because in, in the okay. description, this particular company, I believe it's their first game. Um, and I don't know how much weight it's, uh, it holds when they say that they are an official Xbox, Xbox One developer. Oh, okay. I got so you. So that's, that, that's all the information I had. Okay, and that's all. I, I, that's all I was curious about because I mean I, I own an Xbox uh, just like you do, and I actually yes. we're, we're friends on Xbox and oh fantastic yes I haven't been on lately but I need to I've been hearing Overwatch is the game to get so yeah I, I, and I'm thinking about actually getting it um, I, I didn't get a chance to play the beta though unfortunately um, but I'm one of my gym is like get it get it two hundred percent go for it. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, uh, and that's that's you know, I I haven't been into games like that. I think the last just straight online game I bought was a uh, Titanfall back in the, back a couple of years ago, and that was yeah, that, I've you know, I need to, I need to play that more. I I will play it once. I think I just got. I was like, I'm gonna play with somebody else. Darn it, you know. I would, I, Kevin. I would, I would completely play Titanfall with you. I, I play all the time. So great. Okay, so then I apologize. now. Now, when you see me running around in circles, figuring out what I'm doing, but I will, let's, let's plan a, we'll, we'll plan a play date. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Anybody's and listening, I... Join us and, and you can come laugh at me when I'm trying to do backflips and say, Hey, look at me. Look, look what I can do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How many walls can you jump off of in 15 <laughs> seconds? <laughs> exactly. I fall flat on my face. It's, it's pretty fun. It's, it's pretty fun. I think, I think you'd enjoy it. Um, let's do it. Heck yeah, man! And it's uh, right now. I think on the marketplace they're having a sale. I think it's like ten dollars right now too. So oh, I, it was the first one I bought. I think when I got my Xbox. Oh, you got it already. Okay. Oh yeah, no, I, I got it last year because uh, uh, my ex girlfriend begged me to get one so we could play games together, and <laughs> and then we never did. Um, but yeah, I've, I've I've been taking advantage. One one of the uh, one of my coaches, I think I mentioned last time, I go to a, a gym for nerds here in LA called Nerd Strong Gym. And one of the coaches is this awesome guy named Blair Herter, who um, people may re- remember from G4. He was one of the hosts on G4 a lot. And uh, he works for a, I think it's a video game marketing company, but he was very generous uh, and, and was able to get me a, um, a a live membership as a gift last year, which was amazing. And so I've taken advantage of that. But um, uh, yeah, no, it's, I've, 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 I run around on, on Xbox now and, and play really badly. And so come laugh at me. And make fun of me. <laughs> yeah, awesome. uh, Blair. I, it's funny. I remember Blair Herder from a lot of the uh, E3 coverage back in the day when. Oh G3 yeah. Was, was oh yeah. E3 coverage. Awesome, awesome guy. But boy, his workouts. We often call him. Um, uh, his workouts are, are the Hurt Locker. You know, Blair Herder, <laughs> Hurt Locker. He does this one, um, and I, I, if I, if I'm, I'm hoping I remember the story correctly. He loves Skittles. Okay. So much so, I think he tweeted so much about Skittles, they gave him like a six-month supply or something. Oh, my gosh. So he created uh, the Skittles workout. So he takes a bag of Skittles and empties them into his pocket, right? Each color is a different exercise. So let's say yellow is burpees and green is push-ups and, and uh, uh, you know, blue, or blue is, is sit-ups or something. And so, and then we have these giant, it's awesome, these, these giant foam D&D dice. So he'll pull a color out of his pocket, and we'll, which will correspond to the exercise, and then one of us in class has to roll the die, and that's how many reps we do. And we go through a whole bag of Skittles. Not the teeny little fun size, the big size of Skittles. We call it Taste the Pain Bow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh but it's great no he's a, he's an awesome amazing all the coaches are great i mean you know we've we've uh but he's uh he's definitely one of the guys that uh and we're both we're, and we're both metalheads like uh, he was so excited about the i think he's seen the guns and roses reunion and i was off to iron maiden so you know we have a lot to share there but it's a <laughs> it's a fun place but taste the pain bow yeah i don't like that workout oh my gosh have to, i'll what do is, it what is what is taste the pain bow? well taste the pain bow is, is is the skittles workout that i just talked about you know you know because their motto is you know, you know, taste the rainbow. Yeah. So we call it taste the pain bow because of just when he pulls out a yellow Skittles and we have to do 20 burpees, <laughs> none of us are happy. And so is, is he at the gym a lot? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, he, he's, he's, he's one of the coaches. He's one of the head coaches. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. He came in. He, I remember he came in as a, uh, um, uh, because he, he, he's a, he's a real, he's, he's, uh, he, I think he trained, uh, running teams, Many years ago, too. I, I want to say, I think I recall him saying he, 
he did some Olympic training or was training people who were going to the Olympics or going to try out for the Olympics. But he's a he's a big time runner and bicyclist or cyclist. And uh, uh, yeah, super fit guy. He's He's been a great coach to me. Um, all the coaches have been. But but um, uh, yeah, no, it's it's an amazing place. I, I hope I wish there were more. There's only one location and uh but it really changed my life so i thought you uh, met brought up last time they were looking to franchise or move well i mean they get calls all every week they get calls from all over the world saying you know when are you going to open up here when are you going to open up a location here you know and I, again not a business guy i don't know what it takes to franchise and branch out you know i mean obviously you know money is a big factor but two you know one of the one of the amazing things about this place is that we are a community. You know, we're not just people who go to classes together. I mean, we have we have our our nerd strong game nights. Uh, a lot of, we have dance strong. People went out to a dance club on Saturday night together. Um, a group just started camping strong. They all went on a camping trip together. You know, so it's a community of 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 nerds and geeks who and we you know we 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 do we have, we have the X wing game night now and Magic the Gathering and all this stuff, and that that is a huge aspect of this of this place that why we love it so much and it's i think it's a challenge of making sure that that aspect travels well to another gym so it doesn't it just doesn't turn into a gym where people go to classes that just happen to be the star wars workout that day or indiana jones you know we we want it you know for me it's a safe haven to to uh and a social group that i can trust and call upon you know um like when i had my breakup last year uh another coach coach seeley I mean, that night was saying, come over, we're going we're gonna to have dinner, you know, and, and making sure that, you know, everything was cool, you know, um, and, you know, we take care of each other. And, and that's something that I th- think that is, uh, you know, I mean, I have no idea how do you make that transfer to another location out of state, you know. Uh, I think that's just the mystery code to crack and, and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll find that answer because, again, this, for me, this place has just been uh, a true lifesaver. Um, I mean, I go six days a week now if I can and and uh, 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 you know fit at 42 is my hashtag now so there we are <laughs> that's awesome and I've uh, I've been looking at your new uh, your new Twitter page and it looks like how, how long have you had the new uh, Twitter account by the way uh, two weeks I think Wow and already up over a hundred followers yeah I yeah I was really very good. very happy now it dropped a little bit because I went through and started blocking all the Russian porn ladies <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> you know i said sorry ladies you know yeah, yeah you gotta do that sometimes I, yeah I, there's there's I, you know there's a lot of that yeah not looking right now ladies sorry i mean i appreciate the attention <laughs> uh you know <laughs> yolga but uh <laughs> I think... <laughs> so so yeah no i mean i literally changed it the, the day i took this this uh, awesome workshop with rachel uh, uh um the uh, social media for actors um i restarted it completely that day and was just, you know, I mean, I'm researching hashtags now and, and how to connect with people and, and looking out indie developers and, and, you know, finding, you know, just new, new, uh, new people to connect with. And, and, and that might lead to, uh, to some voiceover work and, and some interesting new projects. So, but yeah, follow me. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know, I know I have, and I think we got the, I, I know my personal account, I followed you and then, um, I, I think that we got the safe case closed page to follow. Yeah. I think we did that. Yep. On it. Yep. Awesome. Thank um, you so much. Luckily, I'm so glad I have Dwall because Dwall mostly handles Twitter. <laughs> oh, good. And, uh, a lot of the fa- <laughs> well, and then you know, because I I would always forget to get on Twitter and then post stuff, and then uh, Dwall. Luckily, I'm I'm happy that uh, you remember to to get on there because I you know I got on there the other day and I didn't even know the password to get in and I ended up having to reset <laughs> it and I'm like. Hey, D. Wall, don't worry. Here's the here's the password. I had to reset it because I don't even know it. <laughs> so, so uh, that's, funny thing. Funny thing is, I already knew it, but huh? he had already changed it. So I was like, oh well. I think I, I think I was missing a cap a cap letter or something. I don't know. It was you know it was one of those things. I was probably I was trying to log in from my phone at one at a doctor's office and I was like, why is this not working? <laughs> oh no! And, uh, and I, well, because I only use like three or four, and he know, Dwall knows this too. I only use you know a few different varieties, um, and so I'm like, well, 
whatever. I'll just I probably typed in a super complicated one, so I reset it. I'm like, here, Dwall, here's the here's the password. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what what's going on, oh, but uh, really? luckily, you know, he's he's updating all that stuff for me. And, Good. Uh, but I I am keeping an eye on it now. Uh, you know, uh, since you've got your new account up, and um, you know, it's it's definitely the best way to keep up with a lot of people. Uh, it is. Uh, again, I mean, uh, this this class was a real real eye opener, and uh, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I'd seen hashtags, and I threw I would always throw the nerd strong in one, you know, but <laughs> but to see, you know, um, uh. uh uh, just understanding how, you know, how they're searched out by people and how to get followers, you know, and then uh, whether they be fans, friends, or again, more importantly, um, independent game studios or visual novels now, which I'm researching a bit more and, and saying, hey, you know what? I don't mind uh, volunteering if, if it might lead to some paid work down the line. Um, and these stories are interesting. So, you know, I mean, you know, one of the, uh, my favorite acting coaches, coach out here is a guy named Jack Plotnick and uh, uh, he's the only one I'll go to out here because one of the things he says you can either be a professional acting class goer or you can act 